Chief Justice Rabner will now administer the oath to the 56th Governor of New Jersey, Philip Murphy. I, please state your name. I, Philip Dunton Murphy. Elected Governor of the State of New Jersey. Elected Governor of the State of New Jersey. Do solemnly promise and swear. Do solemnly promise and swear. That I will support that I will support the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey, and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey, and that I will bear true faith, and that I will bear true faith, and allegiance to the same, and allegiance to the same, and to the governments, and to the governments established in the United States, established in the United States, and in this state, and in this state, under the authority of the people, under the authority of the people, and that I will diligently, and that I will diligently, faithfully, faithfully, impartially, impartially, just Justly, justly and to the best of my knowledge and ability and to the best of my knowledge and ability execute the office execute the office in conformity with the powers delegated to me in conformity with the powers delegated to me and that I will and that I will to the utmost of my skill and ability to the utmost of my skill and ability promote the peace and prosperity promote the peace and prosperity and maintain the lawful rights of the state and maintain the lawful rights of the state so help me God so help me God Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Did a great job. Great job. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> How's everybody doing? Thanks for coming out. Lieutenant Governor Sheila Y. Oliver and your family, especially your great mom, God bless you. Chief Justice Rabner and Justices of the Supreme Court, members of our extraordinary congressional delegation, Representatives Pallone, Pascrell, Norcross, Watson Coleman, Gottheimer, and Cheryl. Senate President Scutari and Speaker Coughlin, Majority Leaders Ruiz and Greenwald, Minority Leader Oroho, former Governors Florio, McGreevy, Cody, Corzine, and Christie, First Lady Tammy Murphy and Josh Emma Charlie Sam, more about you guys in a bit, members of the Cabinet and senior staff, distinguished members of the Diplomatic Corps, clergy, honored veterans, members of law enforcement and first responders, family, friends, and my fellow New Jerseyans. This is a day of reaffirming our oaths, rededicating ourselves to service, and renewing our priorities. Yet it is also a moment for reflection and remembrance. On your way into this building, you may have seen a field of 3,000 flags, each representing approximately 10 of our fellow New Jerseyans lost since the start of the pandemic. As we continue to work to disperse the dark clouds of COVID that hang over our state, we honor the tremendous sacrifices so many have made in their daily lives to help us return to normal. But we honor especially those who will not be with us to see the blue skies we know await us. They were fathers and mothers, sons and daughters, neighbors and friends, Moreover, they were proud New Jerseyans. In their memory, I ask that we all pause for a moment of silence. Thank you. I first sought this office with a clear purpose, to grow and strengthen New Jersey's middle class, to make our state stronger and fairer, and to build an economy that works for every family. In short, to see New Jersey be the place where the American dream not only lives, but thrives. This purpose was born from my own life journey. And even as we have responded to a global pandemic over the past two years, this has been my guiding purpose every day for the past four. 
and it will be my purpose every day for the next four. I am humbled to be the first member of my party to have been given the privilege of a second term in 44 years. Um, <clears throat> shamelessly fishing for applause there. I am honored to follow in the footsteps of a dear friend and a friend of so many, Governor Brendan Byrne. Amen. <clears throat> But being governor is not about the party to which we belong. So I renew my pledge to be the governor for all of New Jersey, the governor for everyone who voted for me and for everyone who did not. After all, we are all New Jerseyans. And as diverse as we are, we share common challenges, common cause, and a common bond. Together we have been through so much, and together we will seek a brighter tomorrow. Yet just because one year or one term ends and another begins does not mean that the challenges of the previous four years cease to exist, if only it were that simple. We know that many challenges remain and that many more will surely come. To start, we continue waging war against a pandemic that has uprooted many of our fellow New Jerseyans' very sense of security. And on top of that, and for far too many across our state and indeed our nation, the fraught state of our politics has brought with it an added fear that the American dream is dying. So our job is to make living, working, and raising a family in New Jersey secure again for every one of the 9.3 million members of our extraordinary extended family. It is our duty to ensure a recovery from COVID that reaches far and wide to include every New Jerseyan and to set them alongside us on the path forward. And it is our duty to get the American dream working for everyone as well, to make good on the promise that you can do better than your parents and that your kids will do better than you, and to reward hard work and make sure everyone gets their fair shot and everyone does their fair share. These goals are inextricably linked together. Our state's nickname, the Garden State, points back to when agriculture was our main industry and our state was the breadbasket of a young nation. But over the past 245 years, we became known for growing something more. We grew industries which in turn grew proud cities and towns. The seeds of innovation planted here grew into technologies that quite literally built the modern world. We grew jobs, good paying jobs. We grew on the shoulders of organized labor. We grew, yeah. We grew diverse. We grew a strong and inclusive middle class. So yes, we are still proudly the Garden State, but our task is building a New Jersey that is also the opportunity state. An opportunity state that works from the middle out and the bottom up. And an opportunity state that doesn't just let current generations, us and our children, prosper, but ensures that those who will follow our children's children can prosper even more. My brother, two sisters, and I were raised, as many have heard me say, middle class on a good day. And I'm incredibly honored that both of my sisters, Dot and Jan, are here. My sister-in-law, Charlene, is here. And many members of their families are here. I love you guys. In reality, we were working poor. Only one of our parents held a high school diploma. What they earned, my mother from her secretarial job, my dad from the many jobs he held, they put right back into our household. But what they gave us, an abiding faith, a love of country, a strong set of values was worth far, far more. I put myself through college and graduate school through a combination of part-time jobs and 
student loans. And when I started my career, I started at the bottom. Through hard work, more than a little luck, and thanks to God, I did better than my parents. And so did each of my siblings. We have lived the American dream. That dream is supposed to be the promise of America. Yet today, the American dream that worked for a family like mine feels out of reach for too many. No family deserves that. I'm often asked why I decided to engage in public service and specifically to run for governor. Of course, there are many reasons, but the most fundamental answer is this. I want this generation and the generations that follow to have the same shot to build a better life that I had. Every family deserves that. I ran for governor to rebuild this path to opportunity and prosperity for everyone in New Jersey. This is my core motivation, what drives me every single day. This is my North Star. The poet Langston Hughes understood we could close the gap between what is promised and what is done. And I quote him, Oh, let my land be a land where liberty is crowned with no false patriotic wreath, but opportunity is real and life is free. Equality is in the air we breathe. So our goal for the next, these next four years is to make sure that the American dream an American dream, by the way, with Jersey flavor and Jersey attitude. Amen to that. Make sure that that dream is alive and well. It is about moving people forward without leaving people behind. It is about voices raised together with a backbeat you cannot miss. It is about taking away obstacles and adding seats around the table of possibility and prosperity. And most of all, it is about filling the air we breathe with real opportunity and full equality. Throughout the course of the past four years, I've had the great privilege to talk with and far more importantly, listen to literally thousands of New Jerseyans. And this by itself, by the way, is a very good lesson for all of us in public office. Uh, we can all listen more, including yours truly. But no matter where they live, no matter whether their family has been here for generations or just came across a river or an ocean to make New Jersey their home, I hear common themes and common dreams. They want a New Jersey with more opportunity for a good job and an even better career. They want a New Jersey that gives them the opportunity of a fair shot at reaching their potential and which calls on everyone to live up to their responsibility to do their fair share to make New Jersey work for all of us. So a stronger and fairer New Jersey that makes sure everyone gets a fair shot and everyone does their fair share isn't just my agenda, it's theirs too. And they want a New Jersey that listens to them, a New Jersey that is more affordable, especially when it comes to three of the biggest expenses facing their family and many others like theirs, health care, higher education, property taxes. As I said in my State of the State address a week ago, we're going to continue making health care more affordable by working across the array of stakeholders, advocates, providers, insurers, others, to, to make common sense decisions that drive down costs while not jeopardizing either the quality of care or our state's reputation as home of one of the nation's finest health care systems. We're going to continue to work with our colleges and universities, invest in our students, and make higher education more accessible and more affordable. And we're going to keep chopping away at property taxes. Though property taxes are not set by the state, either by me or the legislature, the decisions and investments we make directly impact their trajectory. Every dollar of new state funding for our schools and communities, for local roads and 
libraries and for countless other areas is a dollar that stays in your pocket as a property taxpayer. Using this mindset, each of our administration's first four years have ranked among four of the lowest year-over-year -year increases in property taxes on record. But I'm not going to be satisfied with just slowing property tax growth. I want to get us to a place where we can begin to see them go down. So for, yeah. Enough already. So for example, we're going to keep working toward fully funding our public schools. Likewise, we will continue to grow pre-K. Yeah. We will, we will continue as well to grow pre-K with a, an objective of ensuring universal preschool for every young learner in every community in the state. And we're going to continue growing the innovation economy that will power our future and make us a model for the nation and the world. Businesses in the clean energy industry that will literally fuel this revolution while at the same time fighting climate change, most notably in our case, offshore wind. Businesses in the life sciences and medicine that will find the treatments and the cures for diseases and conditions once thought unconquerable. Television and film production because New Jersey is ready for its close-up. Businesses in the cutting edge of new technologies that will revolutionize our grasp of the possible. Businesses in the new cannabis industry that we are setting up in the name of social justice. In online gaming and sports betting, which we now dominate. Businesses whose physical locations will be built and staffed by the hands of organized labor. And importantly, the small businesses that turn Main Street from just a strip of pavement into the center of a thriving community. The mom and pop, the neighborhood restaurant, the corner bar, I am a Murphy after all, the child care center, the art gallery, the theater, the independent retailer. Over the past four years, I've attended many groundbreakings for all of the above. In the next four, I look forward to many more ribbon cuttings. And the people of New Jersey want us to treat their tax dollars, whether they go to support schools or improve their roads or whatever, as if they were our own. And we are. I pledge to you now that the next four years will not see us stray from the path of fiscal responsibility that we are on. That's the path that asks those at the top to pay their fair share so we can do more for more of our people and more of our communities. The path that has the bond rating agencies once again optimistic about our future. The path that has us meeting our full pension obligation. The path that has seen us partner with our public workers to save them and you billions of dollars while preserving the quality of health care. The path that is delivering a more innovative and smaller state government than four years ago. The path that has delivered 14 tax cuts and hundreds of millions of dollars in direct tax relief for our middle class, working families, and seniors. We are turning New Jersey around just as we said we would four years ago. But that work is not done, and we will not be distracted from our mission. Our mission is constant and our efforts relentless because many of the obstacles before us are deeply rooted. We have more gun safety bills to see passed and enacted. We have more work to do to ensure voting rights are expanded and protected. By the way, unlike what we are seeing, unfortunately and sadly, in many other states, and we have a state Supreme Court that will have three additional vacancies, and we will put forward nominees, I promise you, who will uphold its respected legacy of fairness and independence. As I said, just because one term has ended and another has begun does not mean that the old challenges fade away. 
So no, our original mission is not yet done. Our objectives remain constant. We're on year five of our eight-year journey together. A, a new term is not about moving to the next shiny object for the sake of it. And it is clearly not about saying one thing to one group and something different to another. Our task is about steady, hard work toward a vision that brings us all together and brings us all along. In this and more, I am who I said I would be. And now, and now is the time to redouble our efforts to ensure the New Jersey that we hand to the next administration is stronger, it's fairer, and more resilient, and better situated for the years to come. To ensure that the New Jersey we pass along will have even more fertile ground for opportunity to take root. I would be remiss if I did not stop to thank the many people who have stood alongside me as we've undertaken this work. I have been incredibly lucky to have Lieutenant Governor Sheila Y. Oliver as my partner in governing. Sheila. <laughs> Sheila had already inspired many throughout her years of public service prior to becoming Lieutenant Governor. You all know that. But every day of the past four years, she has continued to inspire. And for countless young women and girls of color, she is an example that there is no hill that you cannot climb. And for me, she has been a tremendous source of encouragement as well as a sounding board. I'm so lucky, Sheila, to have you by my side in this journey. God bless you. I feel like one of those Ginsu knife commercials, but wait a minute, act now. But we are just as lucky to have Sheila as our commissioner of the Department of Community Affairs. Amen. Which oversees so many of the programs vital to the lives of the places our fellow New Jerseyans proudly call their hometowns. Over the past two years, the department has stood tall to help families impacted by COVID to stay in their homes to keep the lights on and to keep warm. And more broadly, her leadership has not just been invaluable, but also transformational in our work to revitalize and secure the future of Atlantic City. Amen. I am equally grateful to and inspired by each of the dedicated and hardworking members of our cabinet and staff women and men who have answered the call to public service because they believe in this mission, but more importantly, because they believe in the people of New Jersey. This has never been more evident than across the past two years. The pandemic has required a whole of government response because it left no part of our state untouched. And you have more than delivered, folks. I thank you and bless you. To my partners in the legislature on both sides of the aisle, I look forward to working with you to not just meet the challenges ahead, but to rise above them. And while we're at it, let's rise above party labels to do good things, lasting things for every New Jerseyan. And to my family, I do not know where I would be without our tremendous First Lady, Tammy Murphy. Tammy. Tammy has led the effort to take head on our state's infant and mor maternal mortality crisis. Through her work, we are leading the nation in new laws and programs that have put New Jersey on the path to being the safest place in America to deliver and raise a child. She's been a leading voice in our efforts to combat global climate change and in equipping our students with the tools to confront these challenges. She supported women-owned startups among so many other initiatives. And she has passionately and diligently led the work to restore Drumflacket to make it not just a home for governors, but a place where all residents 
can take pride in and celebrate what it means to be a New Jersey. Moreover, she's been a singular source of personal strength and inspiration to me. And to our four kids, Josh, Emma, Charlie, and Sam, great remarks, by the way. Not sure about the thinning hair, Josh, but for the mo most part. It's true. Over the past four years, your mom and I have had the privilege of watching you all transform into wonderful young adults. You each have viewed public service as a team sport for many years now, and by the way, on both sides of the Atlantic, but especially these past four years. And you don't just show up, which you do, but you each contribute mightily to our thoughts and to the cause. And at times, it has hardly been easy on you, and your grace and character have shown through. For all I ever do as governor, you will still be by far our greatest accomplishments. Love you guys. And I remain mindful of all those who shaped us and who are with us in spirit only, whose own sacrifices will never be forgotten or overlooked. Tammy's mom and dad and her big sister, Sue, my mom and dad, and my big brother, Walt, among so many others. As Tammy mentioned, I swore my oath on the Holy Scriptures that her great-great-grandmother presented to her grandmother on her wedding day more than 100 years ago. Its leather cover shows its age, but the words of its pages read just as clearly as ever. Its guidance is as pure as ever, and the values it instills in all of us are as strong as ever. Service, sacrifice, family, humility. And these are the values that run deep in New Jersey. They are values that we need to reach for once again to show our nation the path forward. Our national political discourse is in shambles. I can fully understand why some fear that the American dream is dying and out of reach, but I will not be among them. As I said when I proudly yet humbly accepted my re-election, if you want to know what the future looks like, if you want to understand what America can be, come to New Jersey. If you want to see what is right with America, look to New Jersey. As my extraordinary congressional colleagues who stand so firmly on the right side of history would agree, where Washington has bogged down, we have moved forward. Where Washington has too often done too little, we have worked together to achieve so much. Where some in Washington pander to the powerful and the wealthiest, we are lifting up working families and strengthening the middle class while ensuring those at the top do and pay their fair share. Where, where some in Washington brag literally about holding back progress, we put our heads down and are doing the hard work. Where some in Washington cling to the big lie, we believe in a bigger truth and we reach for big dreams. And while some in Washington just want to fight with each other in New Jersey, where, by the way, we are no strangers to arguing, we still fight for each other. Some 70, 70 years ago, in a speech to the American Legion during the height of McCarthyism, the then governor of Illinois and future United States ambassador to the United Nations, Adelaide Stevenson, zeroed in on what a nation being driven apart at the time needed. America needed, and I will quote him, a patriotism that puts country ahead of self. A patriotism which is not short, frenzied outbursts of emotion, but the tranquil and steady dedication of a lifetime. So well said. We need this patriotism again. Shouting about how much you love your country is no substitute for showing how you love our country. <laughs> Voting is a patriotic act. Opening doors of opportunity for those who have been kept out is a patriotic act. Standing for fairness is a patriotic act. 
Ensuring good government is a patriotic act. Let's make New Jersey the proof that the ongoing American experiment is not about to come to an end. After all, to be an American is a privilege, and to be a New Jerseyan is an honor. In December of 1776, it was in New Jersey where the American Revolution turned and where the American spirit was renewed. Now in January of 2022, let us make New Jersey the place where the direction of our nation is righted, where the spirit of our nation is restored, and where our common destiny as Americans, regardless of our political party or persuasion, is reaffirmed. So together, we embark on a new year, the first of four filled with possibility and promise, and where we continue building on the progress of the past four. Now in the quiet cold of winter, with a new spring on the horizon, it is time to look forward and to move forward. And we will move forward in the only way we know how and in the only fashion our state has ever done, together. So this is my vow to everyone in New Jersey, whether you voted for me or not. Every single day I will fight for you. Every single day I will work to move our state forward. And every single day I will dedicate to making New Jersey the state where the future works for each of us, because I will be the governor working for all of us. That is why I am committed to making sure everyone across our great state has their fair shot, and each of us does our fair share. That is the American dream with Jersey flavor and attitude and Jersey values. And that is how we make New Jersey the opportunity state. Thank you all so very much. God bless you all. And may God continue to bless the great state of New Jersey and the United States of America. Ladies and gentlemen, we ask you all to please remain in your seats as Lieutenant Governor and Governor and his family pay respect to those lost to the coronavirus pandemic outside the War Memorial.